If you've been watching this channel long, you've probably heard me say size doesn't matter, and it's probably comforted you at least once, but don't get too comfortable because today we're gonna take another look at if size matters or not by trying to destroy this new stack that Speedy B just sent me. And that's an example of something you should not do yourself at home because that's what I'm gonna do to this stack today, most of the ESC, because this is a $60 stack from Speedy B. This is the F405 Mini. It's a 20 by 20 stack with a lot of really cool features actually for $60. A 35 amp ESC in a 20 by 20 configuration with a full F405 flight controller, barometer, Speedy B wireless technology, all the stuff that you expect out of a premium stack for 60 bucks. But it probably catches on fire when you look at it wrong. Right? Well, that at the beginning is exactly what we're gonna find out, but we're gonna get to that later because I want you to watch the video first. I'm not stupid. Anyway, let's take a look at what the stack actually is and what you're getting for your 60 bucks because the specs are kind of impressive when you really look at them. And starting with the flight controller, it looks like just a shrunk down version of their F405 V3 board. It has the same Bluetooth capability. It has an OSD chip on board. It has an F405 processor with four fully broken out UARTs. It supports the O3 air unit, all the DJI air units, the walk snail, the HD zero, everything you want with its digital plug. And to back that up, it has two BECs on board. It has a five volt, two amp BEC, and it also has a nine volt, three amp BEC on a 20 by 20 board. They have crammed so much stuff on here. Along with all of that, it has their battery level indicator lights, which come in kind of handy when you haven't looked at your pack. It has barometers, it has all the things, eight megs of black box storage, all the things you would expect out of a flight controller. If we take a look at the ESC, it's a 35 amp rated ESC, pretty standard, BL Heli S. It does come with an XT30 pigtail and a 470 microfarad capacitor. All pretty standard stuff, but 35 amps. How do they cram a 35 amp ESC in something this small? Well, that's what we're gonna look at because a lot of times when you get really small ESCs with higher amp ratings, things go wrong because the FETs get so small. And what I'm talking about here are these little bitty things, these little bitty FETs. And that's in comparison to a normal size FET, which looks like this, that is much, much larger when you set those two things side by side. The power has got to go somewhere. It's getting crammed through those little bitty fets. All the gates are a little bit smaller. All the stuff is crammed together a little bit more. And that tends to mean they don't hold up as long. But this is a $60 stack. If this thing holds up, there's a ton of accessibility to really budget level quads with a whole bunch of capability in them. Like I said, the Bex on board this, the barometer on board this, the Speedy B wireless on board this, all of the things that we need in a flight controller come in this. And a lot of bigger quads have a mounting pattern for 20 by 20. So you can throw this in a full size five inch quad. And you're probably thinking, well, those look like M2 holes to mount it with. Yes, they do, because I currently have the M2 gummies in, but it comes with a full set of M3 gummies and M3 screws. So you can literally put this in anything with a 20 by 20. You wanna put it in a three and a half inch rig, a three inch rig, sure. You wanna put it in a five inch rig, sure. Don't put this in your seven inch rig. It's not rated for that. <laughs> if you're running a five inch rig too, it's probably gonna be something more ultralight. You really want like 45 amps when you're talking about a five inch, especially for crashing overhead. But like I said, we are gonna burn it up. There are a couple of things that I wanna talk about first though, because there's some features on this flight controller in particular that are just kind of cool. I haven't seen them done a whole lot of times and I'm pretty happy they implemented them on this. We will have to see if it holds up though before we really make any determinations. But they added a 100 microfarad capacitor, this little black box on the flight controller, just for the 3.3 volt rail. And if you don't know why that's good, it's because the 3.3 volt power rail on a flight controller powers your gyroscope. And the cleaner the power to your gyroscope, the cleaner the trace is coming out of your gyroscope. So in theory, we should have really good gyro traces out of this thing with that level of power filtering. There's also an onboard TVS diode, which SpeedyB tends to do in most of their designs. If not all, I haven't seen one of SpeedyBs not have a TVS diode on board. It's really nice. That helps with voltage spikes and clamping down on them so that they don't make it into your sensitive electronics. So there's a whole lot going into this thing. But now that you know what it is, let's take it outside and I'm gonna jam a screwdriver in it for science. 
Just a quick disclaimer before we do that. SpeedyB did send this to me, so if I destroy it, it's not my money or the patrons' money. Happy days. And you should never, ever, ever do this at home. It is highly dangerous to go doing what I'm about to show you that I'm doing in a non-controlled environment if you haven't taken the safety precautions. I am a semi-untrained professional, and I have considered the safety implications of my actions and thought through it quite carefully. In fact, I'll go through it with you when I do the test here in a minute, but just so you know. Do not ever repeat this test at home. It is not something you should do to test the durability of a stack. It is something I'm going to do because I'm an idiot on YouTube and you won't have to after you watch me do it. Okay, let's go try. And our test will involve a pipe because I'm gonna stick this in the props. But before I do that, I'll show you the setup real quick. What I have is the quad clamped down onto brick where it won't catch anything else on fire but itself. I have, have considered that safety measure at least. And I'm going to be jamming this rod into the prop line while I have them cranked up to 70 to 80% throttle. And because you never want to plug a USB into another device when you're doing something stupid like this and backfeed an electrical overcurrent into your USB port, I'll be using the SpeedyB app with its built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the Bluetooth in this case, to spin my motors. Because you can do that in the SpeedyB app. So, yeah, I'm not going to break any USB devices. We're going to try that on 4S first. And like I said before, I'm stupid, don't do this. This is not something you should ever do. You could lose your fingers, your eyeballs, or just, you know, bleed to death. Who knows? Let's give it a shot. The prop just broke. It broke the prop. And so that prop exploded, so I swapped the props out to something a little bit stiffer. This is gonna be Emacs Avian prop, still on 4S, and I'm gonna cut the throttle down to like 30%, because I think, we just totally disintegrated that one. It was going too fast. And that worked pretty well. I slammed it in there and it just kept taking it. And you saw it even like stop the motor a little bit. These are 3,800 kV motors, which is not the highest end on 4S, but you know what it is the highest end on 6S? So let's say we can draw a little bit more amperage and blow the crap out of the CFC. Is it going to do it? I don't know. But 30% throttle again, 3,800 kV motors on 6S. That is 33% more voltage with no motor output limit. If this doesn't kill it, it's probably going to be fine. So 6S didn't kill it either in 3800 kV, and that is one super tore up prop. That's all that's left of it. The ESC wasn't even warm to the touch, so it seems like it's gonna hold up with its itty bitty little fets. At least on something like a three inch prop. Anyway, let's go back to the bench and talk about it a little bit more. So now that we're back at the bench, what was the point of me jabbing Yoldi stick into the props? It looked cool bacon, but why the hell would you do that? Because I was trying to let the smoke out of this here ESC. If I jam up the props while they are at reasonable amounts of RPM, that causes an amp spike in the ESC, which is sometimes represented by fire coming out of the FETs, especially when we're talking about smaller FETs. And these are some really small FETs. So I fully expected, maybe not on 4S, but definitely on 6S, to let the fire out of this thing. I was incredibly surprised that we had no flames pop out. Now, your mileage may vary, but... To me, that really proves that if you go to turtle mode, this stack, you're gonna wind up with props that look like that and probably not a stack on fire. At least that's my experience with it. Now, there's always some variance in manufacturing and it's possible that yours does something strange. And a lot of times when I see stuff like that happen, it's typically partly from the installation. I mean, not everybody's soldering is the same quality and not everybody's mounting is the same. and. Not every stack is even made the same. So yeah, yours might not be as good as mine is, but if it's anything like mine, it's probably gonna be just fine because if you don't come back from turtle mode with props that look like that, then you're probably not gonna blow this thing up and you're probably not coming back from turtle mode if your props wind up looking like that. Something is very wrong. This exceeded my expectations. But for 60 bucks, you get a ton of features. There's no way around it. You get a ton of features on this board, a lot of features that bigger boards don't even have, and it is literally the cheapest stack in its class from a well-known vendor. 
So if you're gonna build a three inch or a 3.5 inch quad and you wanna stack, you might look into this one. They also have fuller size boards for five inch quads like the F405 V3 that's currently on sale, I believe for 60 bucks. So, you know, if you want a full size board, there's that too. But if you're doing something smaller, this is a great choice. If you wanna save a little bit of money, that's up to you. But let me know in the comments below if it's something you're interested in getting, if you're gonna build a three or three and a half inch quad with something like this. Maybe you're gonna build a five inch ultralight freestyle rig, maybe a, a 250 or something. And you're thinking about putting this in there. I don't know. Let me know how that goes and what you're interested in doing with it. And I am super excited to see the market shift to more budget-oriented options when it comes to stacks. For the longest time, I've had to spend $120, $130 for a reasonably well-made stack. I'm just excited to see more options in the lower price range. Give me more of it so I can build more cheaper quads and have more cheaper fun uh, with my cheaper piloting skills. Anyway, leave me a comment below on what you think. And that's it. Thanks, BDB, for sending this to me. Thank you to the patrons for making it all possible and paying for that ridiculous setup that I had in the front yard. And uh, until next time, stay greasy, and I'll catch you later. And now it's time for the patrons to scroll over my face. Yeah, they just ride over my face. Because they're more important than me. They pay for this stuff. Couldn't do it without them. Uh, yeah. This is super expensive to operate a channel like this, and uh, yeah, I would be in all kinds of torrential debt if it were not for these people. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, patrons. If you want to be one, I do have a patron, Patreon, 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 not patriarchal, but I have a Patreon-y thing. So yeah, you could, you could be one of these people on this list and uh, help me do stupid stuff like I did today. I really wish it had caught fire, though. I was so excited to see it happen. I was... I was so heartbroken, but we'll do it again sometime.